As the sun rises over the vast Eurasian steppes, a rich tapestry of human history unfolds, woven from the movements and interactions of ancient people. Among these, a group emerged thousands of years ago, leaving an indelible mark on the genetic and cultural landscape of Europe and South Asia. Their legacy stretches across continents and generations, linking contemporary populations in ways that continue to shape identities today. Around 3000 to 2500 BCE, people connected to the Yamnaya culture in the Eurasian steppes began migrating across vast distances, traveling up to 5000 kilometers east to the Altai Mountains and west into southeastern Europe, including the Hungarian Plain. These migrations, spanning the heart of Eurasia, significantly shape the genetic makeup of future populations. Over time, their descendants established the corded ware and bell beaker cultures, laying the foundations for much of the genetic ancestry and linguistic roots of present-day Europeans. The Yamnaya people introduced early forms of the Indo-European languages that many people speak today. The Yamnaya people adopted a new way of life called nomadic pastoralism, which offered a more efficient method for surviving in the open grasslands. By moving seasonally with their herds across the steppe, the Yamnaya could use resources across large areas without exhausting any one location. This form of nomadism opened the Eurasian steppe as a productive space for human use transforming it from a challenging environment into a viable home for mobile communities and their livestock. The Yamnaya lifestyle included living in small, mobile groups and building temporary settlements rather than permanent ones. This flexibility allowed them to access different grazing areas for their animals, depending on the season, which would have supported larger herds and a stable food supply. Their animals like cattle, sheep, and perhaps horses provided food, clothing, and transportation, making life on the move sustainable and opening a path for human expansion across Eurasia. The Yamnaya culture, also known as the Pit Grave culture, was first identified by a researcher named Gorotsov in 1907. His work involved excavating burial mounds called Kurgans around Kharkov in northern Ukraine. Three main types of graves have been identified to define the Bronze Age in the Pontic Caspian steppes, the Pit Grave also called Yamnaya, the Catacomb Grave, and the Timber Grave. Pit Graves of Yamnaya culture were the earliest type and marked the start of the early Bronze Age. These graves were simple pits dug into the ground and covered by mounds. Catacomb graves represented the Middle Bronze Age and were more complex, featuring niches or tunnels dug into the sides of the pit. Timber graves of Shrubnaya culture characterized the Late Bronze Age and involved graves that were covered with wooden logs or bundles of reeds in areas where trees were not available. In this video, we discuss the development and spread of Yamnaya culture. In the 1950s, researchers noticed that Yamnaya graves contained fewer metal objects compared to the wealth of bronze items found in other cultures of that time, like those in Europe and the Aegean. This led some scholars to label the Yamnaya culture as late Neolithic. Recent evidence showed a significant number of metal daggers in Yamnaya graves in the Volga Ural steppes and Lower Dnieper steppes. This new evidence, along with links to another culture called Mykop, led to a classification of the Yamnaya culture as the Early Bronze Age. Despite this shift, some archaeologists still refer to the earliest phase of Yamnaya as Enneolithic, while most now accept that the Yamnaya culture marks the beginning of the Early Bronze Age. The Early Bronze Age in the North Caucasus saw the emergence of the Mykop culture mid-4th millennium BCE, known for advanced arsenical bronze metallurgy and connections with the wider Circumpontic metallurgical province, including the Yamnaya culture. 
positioned within a trade network linked to West Asia and the Auric expansion, Mycop elites incorporated Mesopotamian symbols of kingship, influencing the North Caucasus and steppe regions. Early Mycop groups migrated from the Caucasus around 4800 to 4700 BCE, contributing to local genetic ancestry but remaining distinct from the Yamnaya people. The Mycop innovations, such as wheeled vehicles and advanced metalworking techniques like bivalve casting, spread across the steppes, enabling the Yamnaya culture to adopt durable tools and arsenical bronze weapons, which were crucial for steppe life and warfare. The mobility afforded by wheeled transport allowed Yamnaya pastoralists to expand trade, establishing a mobile economy that supported later Indo-European migrations. This Mycop Yamnaya exchange laid the technological and economic foundation of the early Bronze Age steppe world. The early Bronze Age in the Pontic Caspian steppes started more than a thousand years earlier than in Central and Western Europe because the Bronze Age timeline in the steppes was more closely tied to that of Southwest Asia rather than Europe. As Yamnaya people migrated westward, they encountered regions where their burial practices were assigned to the late Enolithic or late Neolithic periods, which has led to some confusion regarding their dating. The Yamnaya culture likely emerged from a mix of Enolithic traditions, with roots in the Kavalance culture of the Volga and Repin culture from the Don to the Urals, between 3800 and 3300 BCE. Yamnaya groups near the Don and Dnieper were particularly influenced by the Shredni Stolb culture between 4500 and 4100 BCE. The Stolb culture was linked to the Balkan and Caucasus, as is evident from shared artifacts like animal shaped scepters and imported copper and gold. By the mid Enolithic around 4100 to 3600 BCE, Shredni Stolb graves show the first contracted burials, a precursor to the Yamnaya tradition. So early Yamnaya culture and its burial mounds, known as Kurgans, began to appear as early as 3300 BCE and spread rapidly across the steppes by around 3200 to 3100 BCE. By 3000 BCE, the Yamnaya nomads had established their presence throughout the region. The Yamnaya burials or kurgans are Bronze Age mounds with a segment-shaped structure and a surrounding ditch. Primary kurgans typically measure 12 to 18 meters in diameter and 0.65 to 1.10 meters in height, often featuring stone mounds and walls. Many primary kurgans contain secondary graves, with up to six or seven added. Burials usually occurred in simple rectangular pits, often roofed and containing various items, such as plant mats, wooden structures, and pillows stuffed with steppe plants. The deceased were typically placed in a contracted supine posture, oriented predominantly toward the east, and occasionally sprinkled with red ochre. The use of ochre to decorate the grave and the deceased is a common feature. Funerary assemblages included lightly fired clay vessels, bone pins, and occasionally metal artifacts. While tools and weapons were not abundant, some graves contained pestles, grinding stones, and bronze knives. The material from the graves included items like wheeled vehicles, tanged daggers, and unique axes. Many of these artifacts were inspired by the late Mycop cultures. Their graves also featured triangular flint arrowheads, bone pins and various types of ceramics. The shared burial characteristics, such as pit shape and orientation, alongside local variations like stone rings, indicate that small family groups practiced distinct funerary rites across the Lower Volga and Don region. While most Yamnaya graves were not rich in material goods, 
They were marked by large kurgans, usually 30 to 40 meters wide, covering a central grave that often contained an adult male. Yamnaya culture was not uniform across different regions or periods. Different regional groups have been observed based on differences in burial practices, pottery styles, and funerary items. The Yamnaya culture is divided into several regions. The North Pontic Yamnaya region is located in present-day Ukraine and parts of southern Russia, primarily around the Dnieper River. This area shows strong influences from the neighboring Kukitani Tripilia culture, and notable sites include Mikhailovka, where fortified settlements were established in later periods. The presence of arsenical bronze in this region points to interactions with the Mykop culture, indicating a blend of local and external influences in its metalwork and material culture. The Don Volga Yamnaya region extends between the Don and Volga rivers across Russia. This area includes the Repin culture, an early Yamnaya phase that eventually spread westward and eastward. Here, ceramic styles blend local traditions and new Yamnaya forms, illustrating how the Yamnaya culture evolved through regional interactions. The Don Volga area also serves as a geographic bridge linking the Yamnaya to the eastern steppe. In the Volga Ural Yamnaya region, located around the Volga and Ural rivers in Russia, Yamnaya sites are often close to copper mining resources. Consequently, copper tools are more common here than arsenical bronze, which characterizes the North Pontic Yamnaya region. This division maintained unique craft traditions, showing minimal influence from Western Yamnaya groups and indicating a degree of cultural isolation that allowed for distinct regional development. The Caspian Yamnaya region stretches near the Caspian Sea in southern Russia and Kazakhstan. This area represents the easternmost Yamnaya territory, connecting them with steppe groups farther east. Sites in this region are often sparsely distributed, pointing to a more nomadic lifestyle adapted to the arid climate. The simpler burial practices, typical of the Caspian Yamnaya, reflect the environmental challenges and mobility of populations in this part of the steppe. The Lower Danube or Budzhek Yamnaya area covers parts of modern Romania, Moldova and southwestern Ukraine near the Danube River. This region reflects a mix of Yamnaya and local Enolithic elements, suggesting interaction with Balkan cultures to the west. Unlike other Yamnaya regions, the Budjak area shows less influence from North Pontic Yamnaya, highlighting the variety in Yamnaya culture across different territories and hinting at connections with Western populations. The development of Yamnaya culture can be better understood by examining layers of archaeological deposits at sites like Mikhailovka in Ukraine's Lower Volga region. Mikhailovka is particularly interesting because it's one of the earliest spots where Yamnaya people settled in the North Pontic steppes, probably drawn by its strategic location near a river crossing. Archaeologists found three distinct layers of artifacts and cultural materials at this site. The oldest layer dates back to the late Enolithic period, followed by a layer marking the beginning of Yamnaya presence. Pottery found from this early Yamnaya phase reveals a mix of older, local Enolithic styles and new designs that would define Yamnaya culture. Some pieces were made in the Repin style, linking Mikhailovka with other sites in the region. Radiocarbon dating supports this early Yamnaya expansion into the Dnieper steppes. Most Yamnaya graves and settlements date to a later phase, when the culture had grown more established. At Mikhailovka, this last phase is marked by a much larger and fortified settlement, indicating the expansion of Yamnaya society. Yamnaya pottery varied a lot depending on the region. Styles from places like Kavalance on the Volga 
Repin on the Don, Mikhailovka on the Dnieper, and Budjak in the Danube all reflect unique, local traditions. This variety suggests that Yamnaya wasn't a unified culture in the way we often think of ancient societies. Instead, it was more like a shared belief system or way of life across different groups who each had their own craft styles. Even though they were genetically similar and practiced similar burial customs, their pottery and metalwork were regionally distinct, probably made by local artisans rather than the Yamnaya people themselves. The individuals associated with the Yamnaya culture, found in the Pontic Caspian steppes, show surprisingly little genetic variation. This suggests they descended from a small founding population resembling a clan or group connected through shared paternal ancestry. However, it stands in contrast to the diversity seen in Yamnaya metalwork. For instance, arsenical bronzes are more common in the North Pontic steppes, likely influenced by the Mykop culture, while pure copper tools were prevalent in the Volga Ural steppes near Yamnaya's copper mines. The debate about Yamnaya pastoralism centers on whether they were true nomads who moved constantly with their animals. Some researchers argue that the Bronze Age made true nomadism difficult and that the Yamnaya's dependence on cattle limited their mobility. Instead of long migrations, the Yamnaya might have practiced shorter, seasonal movements within certain areas. This raises the question of whether their migrations, starting around 3100 to 3000 BCE, were due to a more mobile lifestyle or other reasons. If the Yamnaya were only semi-nomadic, their lifestyle may not have been much different from earlier herders. But if they were the first true nomads in the Eurasian steppes, it marked a major shift. By focusing on cattle, sheep and horses, they began using grasslands that had not been grazed before. To support this way of life, the Yamnaya likely developed social and political structures to manage land, coordinate group movements, and maintain family and clan connections. They also needed practical skills, like horse handling and wagon maintenance, which would have helped them travel longer distances evidence like wagons and horse bones found in their graves shows they had the tools and animals necessary for a mobile, nomadic way of life. Since the area had poor soil and limited rainfall, farming wasn't practical, so raising livestock became a better survival strategy. The lack of any burned grains in Yamnaya graves suggests they didn't grow crops. Instead, they primarily sacrificed smaller animals like sheep and goats, which are easier to move around than larger cattle that need reliable water sources. Unlike farmers, the Yamnaya didn't build permanent settlements. Instead, they left large burial mounds, known as kurgans, which are typical markers of nomadic cultures. Built from stacked turf, these kurgans could be seen from far away and were often located far from rivers, showing that the Yamnaya used the open grasslands and moved their herds to find grazing land. Their diet reflected their pastoral lifestyle. The lack of grains in their diet and the focus on sheep and goats give us clues about what they ate. Modern scientific methods, like analyzing stable isotopes from bones and studying dairy proteins in dental plaque, help us understand their diet. These analyses support the idea that they relied on animal products rather than plants for food. Research comparing diets over time in the Volga Ural steppes shows a significant shift from the Enneolithic period to the Bronze Age. While Enneolithic people ate more from forests and rivers, the Yamnaya diet shifted to include more livestock especially sheep and goats. This shift shows they moved from a diet of fish and wild game to one based on grassland animals and animal protein. Yamnaya dental health was good, with no cavities, 
which is linked to a diet free from cultivated grains. This finding highlights their unique lifestyle compared to later groups who consumed more grains. The remains of animals from early Yamnaya sites, like Mikhailovka and Repin, give insight into their animal keeping practices. Mikhailovka had a lot of cattle bones, suggesting feasting events, while Repin had many horse bones, showing the importance of horses in their diet. In contrast, another site, Osatovo, relied mainly on sheep and goats for meat and dairy. These differences show that while cattle were essential in some places, sheep and goats played a big role in diet and burial rituals across Yamnaya sites. Studies of proteins in dental plaque indicated that dairy products, possibly cheese and yogurt, became a regular part of their diet, while earlier Enolithic individuals showed no such signs. Unlike other groups, there was no farming in Yamnaya graves, confirming that they didn't practice agriculture. The discovery of horse milk proteins in two Yamnaya individuals marks the earliest evidence of horse milk consumption. An important development was the invention of the wagon around 3500 BCE, which along with horseback riding, increased their mobility. Historical accounts, like Herodotus's description of the Scythians, suggest that steppe nomads used two main types of transportation, horseback riding for quick travel and herd management, and ox-drawn wagons to carry heavier items, like tents and food. Around 3400 to 3300 BCE, parts of wagons appeared in Yamnaya burial mounds, along with the oldest known wheel from this region. While some researchers think wagons were mostly a status symbol, others believe they changed how herders traveled and farmed, as they needed to keep oxen for pulling the wagons. Horse riding may have helped them manage their herds better, as herders on horseback in Mongolia today can handle three times as many sheep as those on foot. However, evidence of horseback riding is hard to find in archaeology, and it remains a topic of debate. The earliest known horse domestication likely began around 3500 to 3100 BCE at Botai in northern Kazakhstan. Horse teeth from Botai show signs of wear from bits, indicating riding. At Botai, 5 out of 19 horse teeth examined showed this wear, which doesn't appear in wild horses. Other evidence of horse domestication includes pits filled with horse manure, likely pens, and traces of horse milk in pottery. Before Botai, around 4500 to 4000 BCE, people in the Kavalance region in the Volga steppes, who already herded cattle and sheep, started showing new behaviors toward horses. Horse bones were found in graves with other livestock, and horses were arranged in specific ways, suggesting they were becoming more than just wild animals. New horse images from this time suggest a growing symbolic importance. The Yamnaya also included horse bones in some graves, hinting that horses were culturally significant to them. For instance, at one Yamnaya cemetery, an adult male was buried with a dagger, two clay pots, and the skulls of 40 horses. Although this wasn't a common ritual, it shows that horses were important to Yamnaya life and possibly connected to their identity or status. Recent DNA studies reveal that domesticated steppe horses first appeared around 2200 to 2100 BCE in the Don Volga steppes. They mostly descended from local horse populations, including Yamnaya horses. The horses from Botai, Kazakhstan, had little influence on this lineage. The newer domesticated steppe horses used in chariots were calmer and more suitable for warfare with traits for endurance, making them highly valuable by 1500 BCE as they replaced older breeds across Eurasia. These horses likely evolved gradually, becoming more domesticated over time. Though ancient DNA shows when certain traits emerged, 
It doesn't reveal exactly when horses were first used for riding or milking. Evidence from around 4500 to 4000 BCE shows changes in human-horse interactions, like in caverns. For instance, Yamnaya people in Romania show skeletal signs of riding and residues in their teeth indicate they drank horse milk. Larger horses also started appearing in Central Europe, suggesting a Yamnaya influence on horse breeds. The Yamnaya used horses for riding, milking and rituals, selecting for traits that later defined domesticated steppe horses. However, their horses were less durable and more skittish than later breeds. Managing larger herds required mobility, leading to the invention of wheeled vehicles around 3400 to 3300 BCE. These vehicles, found in Yamnia graves, helped transport goods and allowed a new lifestyle combining slow wagon travel with fast horseback riding. Over time, the Yamnaya created a system where some clans accumulated more wealth and influence, leading to social inequality. Yamnaya graves reflect this, with some people buried with valuable goods, showing a weak but noticeable hierarchy based on reputation and alliances. Physically, the Yamnaya in the Volga steppes were taller and more robust than their Enolithic ancestors, with the average male femur measuring longer than Enolithic males. This increase in height is linked to a more nutritious diet, likely rich in animal products. The Yamnaya were also taller than contemporary European farmers, showing that their simpler, animal-based diet supported good physical growth and health. The Yamnaya culture is distinguished by its Kurgan cemeteries rather than permanent settlements, contrasting sharply with the more structured settlement patterns of the Srobnaya culture. But archaeological evidence shows that Yamnaya sites, particularly those east of the Don River, are notably scarce, indicating a potentially more nomadic lifestyle. Excavations in regions like the Samara Valley revealed low artifact densities associated with Yamnaya, suggesting these were primarily temporary camps rather than sites of substantial habitation. In contrast, earlier Neolithic and Neolithic settlements along riverine areas displayed diverse occupations and a more sedentary lifestyle, characterized by a rich array of animal remains. These sites contained evidence of domesticated animals and varied cultural levels, highlighting a significant economic complexity that existed before the Yamnaya period. The transition into the Yamnaya culture around 3300 BCE marked a pivotal shift, as these earlier settlements were largely abandoned, signifying a move towards a more mobile pastoral existence. The Yamnaya pastoral economy relied heavily on mobility, with horseback riding and likely the use of wagons facilitating the transport of goods and herding of livestock. This transition not only altered their economic practices, but also had profound implications for social organization, potentially giving rise to hierarchical structures within Yamnia society. Kurgan graves indicate wealth and status disparities, reflecting a level of social inequality that warrants further investigation. Critiques of existing theories surrounding Yamnaya nomadism suggest that traditional frameworks have often overlooked the significance of their mobility and the abandonment of earlier riverine settlements. Revisiting earlier analyses that emphasize the nomadic aspects of Yamnaya culture may provide a more nuanced understanding of the societal changes occurring during this transformative period in the Pontic Caspian steppes. The Kurgan theory suggests that steppe peoples migrated into Europe in multiple waves, with the Yamnaya migration as the last significant wave. As the Yamnaya culture expanded into the Balkan Carpathian region in the late 4th to early 3rd millennium BCE, Typical burial mounds became common in areas such as Serbia, Bulgaria, and Hungary. 
The integration of Yamnaya practices into local customs indicates a gradual blending of cultures rather than a sudden conquest. These graves, known for specific burial rites, are mostly located between the eastern Carpathians and the southern Urals. However, similar graves found farther west suggest a migration of Yamnaya groups from the steppes, though scholars interpret the route of this migration in various ways. The spread of Yamnaya culture from the steppes north of the Black Sea to the West Pontic region, including the Balkans and Carpathians, likely involved waves of migration. These migrations, starting as early as 3800 BC, grew larger around 3000 BC as groups from the steppe moved southwest, overcoming challenges to establish new communities. Traveled early on, Yamnaya customs like burial mounds, ochre, and crouched burials appeared in regions like Thrace and Dobruja. Over time, however, local customs blended in, especially in southern Bulgaria, where graves began to include local pottery and okra use decreased. The Yamnaya culture spread into Europe, especially through the Budjak culture, bringing Yamnaya traits to places like the Carpathian Basin and beyond. The Budjak culture within the Yamnaya area shows Eastern influences from Yamnaya traditions, like contracted burials, which started spreading from the Dnieper to the Volga region. These burial practices united communities from the Carpathian Basin to the Urals. The burial mounds in these areas suggest large population movements rather than just elite burials. These tumuli were widely accepted by the local population, indicating coexistence rather than dominance. Yamnaya burial practices became more distinct from their origin the farther they traveled with northern graves resembling the homeland more closely than those in the south, which incorporated local elements. The reasons behind these changes remain uncertain, but may relate to both distance and time. This movement wasn't just one way. There was a pendulum migration, where steppe groups brought their culture to the Balkan-Carpathian region, and local traits returned to the North Pontic and North Caucasus areas, leading to even stronger cultural exchanges with the West. In the early Bronze Age, this exchange integrated cultures like the Corded Ware culture into the steppe, but the Caucasus region mostly received influences from the South, rather than sending them outward to places like the Near East. Researchers believe that the Yamnaya migrations were driven by the search for new pastures and possibly by the desire to access copper resources in the region. However, the actual scale of these migrations seems to be smaller than previously thought. The evidence suggests that these migrations took place slowly, allowing for continuous interaction with their original homelands. This slow integration means that the genetic influence of the Yamnaya people in Europe was gradual rather than overwhelming. While their cultural impact was significant, it didn't lead to drastic changes in the local culture. The Yamnaya culture adapted to local traditions, indicating a complex relationship rather than a straightforward conquest. This slow process of migration and cultural exchange contributed to the emergence of the corded ware cultures in Europe, underscoring the complex relationships between steppe peoples and local communities that shaped the cultural landscape of ancient Europe.